all you need to know about Aurora, the Eminence in Shadow Season 2 content from anime stats. You know what to do. Like this video, subscribe to this channel. Now, since we finished Season 2, I think we won't be spoiled this one. Let's, let's check it out. Aliases. Aurora is nicknamed the Witch of Calamity, and she is also known as Demon Diabolos. Because in Season 1, it's heavily implied, or it's pretty much confirmed, that she is Diabolos. But... With the new information we had, with the different realms and who Aurora is based off of, she is, but she isn't, you know, Diabolos. Okay, Origins 1. Records of her date back to over 1,000 years. Now, this is the perfect scenario where they would introduce a character like this as a lolly. You know, 9,000-year-old demon, but it's a fucking 12-year-old girl's body. Why? Because lolly cons exist. Next one. Origins 2. She was a war orphan who was locked away by the cult and was experimented on. This, I think, is the spoiler from, you know, season two finale, right? The cult of Diabolos were definitely experimenting on them. I think there was like the first realm where Diabolos is based off of and Aurora is trying to like inherit his powers through these like experimentations. I think that's what cult of Diabolos was trying to do, right? Experiment N1. So I guess this is like number one. Aurora is considered the cult's first success in creating a powerful super being with immense power. So she's like origin one, literally patient zero. Origin three. How she became Diabolos is unknown. However, it is speculated that she was implanted with the cells of a powerful demon from another dimension, right? Whatever realm the Diabolos is from, and I'm, I don't know if this is the first realm, but that's basically the middle, the center within the Cult of Diabolos universe sigil, right? So you would think that someone as important as Diabolos would be from the first realm, like the place where they call it the truth. I don't really know, but yeah, that's who, who that's who Aurora is based off of. Escape. When she reached maturity, she managed to escape from the cult's laboratory. Demon Diabolos. Aurora inexplicably transformed into the Demon Diabolos and brought the world to the brink of destruction. Why though? But it's like, why though? First realm's not the center? Okay. Why, why, why did she bring the world to destruction? Maybe she was mad at the cult for doing all the shit to her as a child. So she's like taking blind revenge on everybody. Maybe that's an explanation. Who knows? Revenge. As the Diablos, Aurora only went around destroying things due to... Here we go. Due to... Being mistreated and abused by the cult her whole life. Gotcha. But like, yeah, she could have also went crazy with power, but it's like, damn. You know, you could just wipe out Cult of Diablos. That's all you gotta do, but you fucking wiped out the entire world. <laughs> yeah, but maybe she like went berserk, right? She just lost control, transformed into the Diablos. Whatever this Diablos even looks like. We haven't even seen like an image of the true form of Cult of like, Diablos, right? I don't think we have. We've seen like limbs. We've seen like accessories to the left arm of Cult of Diablos and shit like that, but have we seen its face or like what it actually looks like? I don't think so. But that's something we can look forward to in the future. 10 years old. She was eventually stopped by the three heroes. That's right. Wait, wait. The super soldiers created by the cult using her cells. So this is when I was like conflicted about... Um, this is when I was conflicted about how I view the Cult of Diablos. Because when Mordred was explaining last episode that, hey, the demon Diabolos, you know, uh, like fucking... Actually, no, 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 I can't say that. Because I was going to say, it almost looked like the cult of Diabolos was saving the world from Aurora or the demon Diabolos. But then if you think about it, it's like, wait, you guys made this problem. Y'all are just cleaning up after your own mess and you're expecting me to say thank you? Fuck you, Mordred. Hold up. You're right. I'm starting to realize, no, that's a load of bullshit. Okay, the three heroes, right? We know there's a human hero, Freya. There's an elf hero, right? Oh, wait, Anime Stats is going to talk about that pretty soon. Okay, but the super soldiers are, you know, created by the cult using herself. Now, we have the three heroes. According to history, the elven hero, Olivier, cut off her demonic left arm and is now being sold as an accessory <laughs> for side merchant hustlers. <laughs> Where's the other heroes? While the rest of her body parts were cut off by the other two heroes, which is the beast hero that we don't know yet. I mistakenly thought that the beast hero was Shiva, the person that Getan was talking about in his flashback moment. But no, people corrected me, that's not who it is. There's also another third one, which is the human hero, Freya. 
I think the human hero has been mentioned in a couple episodes back, right? But I don't think we know what she looks like. I, I don't think so. Diablos' curse one. Before dying, she cursed the three heroes that they'll suffer into becoming a monster like her. What? The three heroes will become a monster like her. This isn't like the origin stories of how like Isekai cancer started to happen, right? The mana overload? I don't really think so. But interesting. Casted a curse on them. Diablo's curse too. Her curse is known as demon possession. There it is. The mana overload. And it is passed on to female descendants of the three heroes. Now, this is something I'm still confused about. Because I thought that... Because like, if this is true, I thought that demonic possession... Or mana overload is the same thing, and this is just isekai cancer, meaning every girl in the series can just get it. But no, now it's just like only descendants of the three heroes. So every shade member, right? Every shade member that we cured to give powers to, they're all direct descendants. Like straight up. I mean, we have Epsilon, we have um, Alpha, I'm Beta. I they're all elves, right? I mean, even in the season finale, they were talking about the elven artifacts. What Mordred was using for the, the invisible sword before they just started up roasting this fucking outfit. But they're all just descendants. I thought that it could have been anyone that gets the demonic possession, but I guess not. Pretty cool fact. Seal. After being cut off, her amputated left arm was still alive until... Oh, this is season one material that I should know, I think. Until the cult immobilized and sealed it through an ancient artifact. That's right, we saw that during the Nelson stuff. Diablo's Cult 1. Since then, the cult had been harvesting her blood to extract its life cell for the experiments. And I think this is used to, like, also create, like, the immortality pills. That's what Nelson was going after, I think. Diablo's is Cult 2. It's speculated that her other body parts are scattered across the world, kept in the cult facilities. So there's gonna be, like, the right arm of the cult of Diablos. We already have the left arm. You could get the fucking left toe of Diablos. Think uh, it probably doesn't have a dick, but could you imagine it's like the fucking left testicles of Diablos? Could you? I mean, with the meme show like Eminence and Shadow, couldn't you definitely like see something like that happening? Lost memory. Aurora herself has lost so much of her memory for fucking plot convenient purposes because if she fucking explains who she is, where she came from and everything, then the story just, you know, there's, there's no mystery, but she lost her memories due to being locked away in the sanctuary. Hope. While locked up for 1,000 years, Aurora hoped to find someone strong enough to free her. And then came in our main character, the knight in shining armor. Well, technically, his iron-clad black darker than dark outfit isn't shining but i know what he's trying to say you know knight in shining armor aurora fell for sid purely because he was the only person who was willing to risk his life for her huh i thought that maybe well maybe that's when she actually fell in love but i thought that uh during the bushin not, not the bushin festival the the holy festival or whatever it was when we summoned aurora and when we entertained her in the arena the coliseum with the fight i thought she was amused there she's like damn this is fun. It's been a long time since anyone could keep up like this. Maybe that's the, the spark, right? And then as soon as we went in, right? Yeah, the goddess trial. And then as soon as we went actually in to the, the sanctuary or whatever, right? And, and we tried to free her. That's when she actually fell in love. And now the woman that fell in love with us is technically our little, si sorry, our, our bigger sister, which is not bad, actually. Not bad at all. Let's fucking go, Claire. Violet hair. Shadow calls her Violet due to her appearance. This is black, but I know what you're trying to say. It, it, it is more purple, right? Goddamn. Here we go. More AI Aurora armpit fan service. God bless this one. <laughs> oh, that one's great. This one's great. True progenitor. Aurora is the original progenitor of vampires who inhabit the world. So it's like... That's more stuff I have to remind myself again because like she's like she's like a research experiment based off of Demon Diablos, but then again, she's also like the progenitor of vampires. So it's like vampire origin blood and like demon demonic blood. They're like the same but different, but same, you know? 
And with those vampire genetics, right, we got the possession going on. It's unknown how Aurora managed to possess Claire. However, it's speculated that... No, Aurora managed to possess Claire because Claire was infected with the progenitor blood, right? Elizabeth attacked Aurora, right? That's what happened. Everyone in that rooftop scene against the bloody queen, Elizabeth, got attacked. They had traces of, you know, the vampire blood. And then Aurora just was able to hold up. That's mine. I'm going to fucking yoink that and just get in there and take you over. I, I think that is the explanation or like a brief explanation of how the possession works, right? However, speculated that anyone who holds a large enough concentration of ourselves can become our vessel. Yes. Key thing to note here that we talked about before is large enough concentration. So everyone in their rooftop, including Oriana, 664, 665, Beta, everybody that got hit by Queen Elizabeth technically could turn into Claire, but actually it's not the case. Only those who got a, like a big enough dosage could do that. Another very interesting fact is, what's it called? Another really interesting fact is uh, mist form. This is a style that was used by Elizabeth, but was copied by Alpha. Alpha basically learned this, not because she had the blood injected in her, but because I believe some Shadow Garden member told her about it and they were able to do research. They were able to basically copy it. But then I was like, hold up. Does that mean like anybody got hit, that got hit with uh, like Aurora's blood could then, I'm uh, sorry, Elizabeth's blood could technically go misform? I'm not really sure how that works. Next, Nemesis. Despite having no proper recollection of Olivia in her memories, oh, Aurora had an unexplained fear of Olivia when they met in the sanctuary. Probably just like it's just so something down to the bones because, you know, the three heroes defeated Cult Diablos and now you have like Nemesis who is like kind of like, like a, what is it? Like a research clone or something like that that's based off of Olivier, right? It's pretty much straight up PTSD, just like how in the finale of season two. Remember that guy? That guy was shaking because holy shit. Remember the guy with the fucking crowbar? Oh, is he around again? Blood magic. Aurora specializes in magic that manipulates blood. Yeah, that's pretty much what blood magic is. True, <laughs> true. Weapon. Have we seen this weapon? Aurora uses a scythe as a primary weapon. I don't think we saw the scythe ever been used before. Maybe I forgot. And another interesting fact, Epsilon's main weapon is also a scythe. But we've never seen Epsilon <laughs> use the fucking scythe. It's like, <laughs> whatever. Right? And Beta uses a fucking bow. Bow and arrow. We never get to see that. And I was going to say, and Zeta uses chakrams, but then it's again, we never see Zeta, so it doesn't really matter. The Pearl of Diablos. Oh, Ada uses chakram? My bad, my bad. Pearl of Diablos. This is like the, the pills, right? Made of the blood. Drinking a, spe a specially processed drop of her blood made by the cult can seize aid, uh, aging for a year. Zeta. I was right. No, Zeta was the chakram one. I was right. Anyways. This is the basically the immortality, right? The the anti-immortality pills, right? The Pearl of Diablos. I think there's two different ones. I forget the other one, but there's I think it's like a tier of Diablos, and the other one is like the Pearl of Diablos. I'm not really sure, but I think the Pearl of Diablos is a more refined and concentrated one. And now we have power mimicry. Aurora managed to replicate Sid's I am the all reigns atomic technique after seeing it once, but technically, this is anime only. So is this really canon that Aurora can manage to mimic people's moves? Because if you think about it, that should never happen in the manga or the light novel. I still think during the fight against Queen Elizabeth, that episode, I am the recovery atomic. It wasn't that hype for me. I, I like it wasn't. But what when Aurora just casted her fucking magic field, you know how when Sid's about to do I'm atomic and everything just becomes purple, he sets these magic grids. Aurora fucking does the same thing, but it's all red. And at that moment, I was like, holy shit. There's no way you're doing this right now. No fucking shot. And then she goes, I am. I'm like, oh my God, she's fucking doing it. Moments like that are when anime original moments are fucking goaded, dude. I love that shit. But again, guys, please go give anime stats a like. If you enjoyed this video and subscribe to this channel. I love these infographics. And we'll be watching a lot more if you enjoy them too.